Hey everybody, today I was going to talk about the Sacred Hollies, which is the Ilex genus. Um, a lot of us know the uh, holly plant is being associated with Christmas, and uh, Ilex aquifolia, uh, the European holly, is associated with Christmas, and um, wreaths have long been made out of it. Um, but the hollies I'm most interested in are hollies that people use, and the most common use for hollies outside of ornamentals is uh, their use as a tea or a tea substitute. I don't like to call it a tea substitute because I think it's just as good or better than tea. But uh, I'm just going to go alphabetically through a list of uh, the hollies, um, the ethnobotanical hollies. So we have Eulis Gayusa, which is a very interesting, um, probably the most rare and obscure holly tea, or one of the most rare and obscure holly teas. It comes from South America. Um, and it's used in the Amazon, uh, as well as it, it, it's distributed uh, from the Amazon to other areas of South America. But mostly its use is restricted to the Amazon, where it grows deep in the jungle. It's about a 30 to 40 foot tall tree at its highest. And it has large uh, green leaves, um, which uh, I do not believe they have... Uh, spikes or spines, or at least not prominent ones, um, but it is used as a stimulant by many tribes, it is roasted, and they will actually drink large amounts of it and vomit, um, and that is a theme that we'll see with some of the hollies, and um, they will uh, they will do a purging ritual uh, in the morning, the men, or uh, Anyone can do it, but it's often the men and the young men of the tribe who drink large amounts of Gayusa, uh, which it's Elix Gayusa, or Alex Gayusa, and the, the common name is also Gayusa, or Waisa, Waiusa. Um, and it is a, uh, it's a stimulant, it contains caffeine, it contains um, very high amounts of ca caffeine, in fact, I think it contains the highest amount of caffeine of any known plant. Um, but it also contains other compounds which make it uh, medicinal. It's very good for you. Um, you can drink it without throwing up if you don't drink large amounts. Um, but many of the hollies have a mechanic value. Uh, the uh, European holly I mentioned, uh, Ilex aquifolia, uh, is very emetic, and I think that's the only use for it there really is. And the berries are mildly poisonous. Um, continuing on, we have Ilex uh, opaca which is the American holly. And the American holly is, um, it can be used as a tea. It was used as a tea substitute during the Civil War, um, but it doesn't contain caffeine, and it's not a very good tea, uh, if you ask me. Um, let's see, we have uh, the largest um, um, holly, the, the most commercially used holly you may have heard of which is yerba mate. And yerba mate is a very common drink in South America, in Uruguay, in Paraguay, and in, um, in, in many areas in South America, actually. Uh, it is drank, and its use is actually becoming popular in uh, the United States and Europe and uh, what, I, what we call Western culture. And um, this drink, yerba mate, is it's a Ilex paragorensis. Um, and it is a, um, it's grown in, in large fields, it's kept as a shrub, where the leaves are harvested, um, the leaves are sometimes, uh, smoked, uh, held, held over a fire, I guess, smoked, dried, or, um, steamed, or they can be left green and, and simply dried, green mate, um, and, and roasted as well, I believe, but, uh, it is a very common, uh, common thing in South America, especially as I said in Uruguay and Par Paraguay, where it's drank out of a, a gourd, where water is poured into the gourd, and it is sipped from a straw, which is called a bilaba. And it's a very social thing, and the person who, usually the person who buys the mate, um, pours the water into the this gourd and drinks from it first, and then they will pass it around and pour more water into it, where it's reinfused the same mate, stir it around and drink more of the monte through the bilaba. Oh, and by the way, the bilaba is this type of metal straw with a filter on the end, almost, where it's, you just pour monte, uh, the monte, yerba monte, the green yerba monte, into the gourd, and then you pour the hot water in on top of that, and it's filtered by this bilaba straw-like thing, which is a metal straw. 
and uh, it's a very social thing. It's you know it's something people do with friends, and uh, you know I guess like a smoke break here or or getting together for a beer or whatever. I think it's a very um, interesting and healthy practice. It's been shown that uh, yerba mate has uh, antioxidants and polyphenols and lots of things that are really good for you. And uh, you know that's 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 the most used holly as well. Uh, anyway, the next one is a personal favorite of mine just because it's a native uh, to the southern United States, uh, just like I am, and that is uh, Alex Vomitoria. And yes, Vomitoria. But don't let the name put you off. Um, as we talked about with Alex Gaisa, uh, hollies, some hollies have um, a, an emetic effect. And Alex Vomitoria does have an emetic effect if you create something called the black drink which is a boiled down decoction of the leaves, twigs, and berries of the Ilex vomitoria plant, uh, also known as the Yapon Holly, uh, or the Yopon Holly. And um, it, it, the young men in the tribes of, of, uh, of the Native Americans of the southeastern United States would drink large amounts of this Ilex vomitoria um, and then purge. It, it's very interesting that these two complexes arose where in, in South America, you have the Alex uh, Gaiusa complex, and then in North America, you have the Alex Vomitoria complex. And both drank large amounts of a different species of holly and then purged or vomited, a ritual purge or vomiting. And the, uh, the Yapon holly was actually extremely important, the, the most important plant to the uh, Native Americans of the South, southeastern United States. Uh, you know, I used to think that tobacco was one of the most important plants of the southeastern United States, to, to the natives in the south, southeastern U.S. But um, Yapon was actually a more important plant, and it was traded um, back and forth uh, or, or out to the, uh, to the western uh, natives, who would then trade other things to the, uh, to the coastal natives, because Yapon only grows within about 30 or 50 miles from the coast or from a, you know, an inlet or, a, you know, somewhere where there's salt water, basically, near the coast. Uh, so the, the natives of the coast actually became very rich trading uh, Yapon. And, um, let's see. Uh, Yapon, as I said, don't be put off by the, the vomitoria name. Um, it, it, you know, it only was the black drink was what made you vomit. It was when you boiled it down into a decoction and it made it very thick, like almost like syrup. If, uh, if you just drank it as a normal infusion like you would do a normal tea, it has uh, no emetic value, if, especially if you don't use the berries, which you, you shouldn't use at all unless you plan to use it as, as an emetic, a purgative. Um, but it, it's just a, it, it was drank every morning by the Native Americans, and it wasn't used every morning as a purgative, certainly. Um, just as Gaiusa can be drank and not be used as a purgative. Um, perhaps I'll do another video continuing to discuss Yapon in a later uh, video because I, there's a lot of information about Yapon that I have because I have such a personal interest in it. Um, I will quickly say before I end the video because I'm probably running out of time uh, that there is an, an Asian, uh, there's a set of Asian hollies that are used as tea. And those Asian hollies are um, Elix Kuding Cha, I believe is how you say it, that, or at least the, the common name is Kuding Cha, and the species name is also Kuding Cha. Kung, kud, yeah, kung ding, kud ding cha. Sounds, certainly sounds Asian. Um, but the other is uh, Ilex uh, latifolia, uh, which is the luster leaf holly. That one's uh, used as tea as well. Um, and then there is Ilex unonensis variation Isolida. And that one is uh, used on the, uh, the border of China and Tibet as a substitute for tea or as a tea. Um, and, you know, I find all this very interesting. Most of these plants are fairly easy to, uh, to acquire, except for Elix unonensis and uh, Ilex gaiusa uh, that I'm aware of. Most of the other ones should be fairly easy to, to obtain, especially uh, Ilex um Ilex opega, um, 
probably the luster leaf holly isn't too hard to find. Even scutting cha may be hard to find. But, you know, we should get out there, do some experimentation with these, do some selective breeding, and get these things to be uh, even better teas than they are right now because they're really good and no one really uses them. So, I wish people would, uh, you know, get out there and uh, drink some of these sacred hollies because they're so important to native peoples of the Americas and other parts of the world. Uh, so, hope you guys enjoyed the video.